I love Cindy Kim bitch because she gets irritated. Whatever irritates Kim, I like Too to do. funny, mama. <laughs> so <laughs> that I was and I was like, I had to Too funny, mama. What's with the grip? Hi! Hey! Welcome to Two Funny Mamas, and I am Sherry Shepard. And I am Kim Whitley, and I am uneven in my box. You oh. are? <laughs> okay, that's probably something you should take care of with the doctor. <laughs> <laughs> I thought about that. Oh, see, I done went down. Oh, I damn it. I went down in the street. We got box <laughs> issues. <laughs> Wait a minute, hold on. I went down. Here we go. I'm, I'm, well, I got box okay. issues. Hold up. Okay, wait. I'm, let me go I'm, up. Okay, wait, Kim, I went down. I, I went down. I went, okay, hold up. Let me go up. But we, I'm down. You're good. If you stay there, we're at the but same now we height. Got too much, but now we got too much room at the top. Okay, I'm up. Oh, let me see All if right, I'm so down I'm there with you. Your head, my head longer than yours. No, say now you went up. Stop it. Go down. Hold Sherry Shepard. Sit still. Okay, sit still. Still. Okay. Is that eh, okay? Is, I mean, honestly, you should both be up about four inches. Why don't y'all fix your end, Chris? Well, welcome to Two Funny Mamas, everybody. <laughs> uh, podcast, and this is what you get. You get the unfiltered and the ridiculousness. Mm. What? what you, All yeah, this is Move your computer. I took off some of my headroom. If I move the computer, you look. Look at us. Look. See that? Wow. Look at us. We're Couple even. But pros. I don't want nobody, everybody to see all this right here because it ain't Damn, even. It's black. It's black. You can't see anything. Okay. It's black. Okay. They don't see the extra stuff coming out the top. Okay. Well, you can see it when you hit it like that really hard. <laughs> I got to come raid your closet. Absolutely. I got clothes on my eye. You know, it, we're in New York and I wish I could have a, because we're moving and I wish that I could have a garage sale, like a, but we can't do it on the sidewalk. Um, so I don't have any, I don't have, I got all these you clothes. Put it all in Kim's closet dot com. Okay. I name. sent stuff to Andre. He ain't even sold the stuff that I sent to him. He still got okay, it. Let me get it. So I think Andre's wearing clothes. You we said we're going to no, promote that okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, Andre's mama, I'm just kidding. I don't believe that Andre's one of clothes, funny. but he hasn't sold them well, yet, Chris, so I have all these clothes. There's some stuff I wanted you to raid your closet, and I raid my closet to just be able to give to a a fan. Like I have stuff from other shows that yeah. I did that I haven't. Okay. I did a show called Trial and Error with John Lithgow and Kristen Chenoweth, and I have a crew jacket with the tag still on it that says Trial and Error. Yeah. So if there's a person, mm -hmm. a fan. Yes, a fan of mine who likes trial and error. I got a shirt. I hosted a game show called Best Trivia Ever with uh, Ken, the guy who hosts Jeopardy. Mm -hmm. And it's a shirt that I got for the crew with all of us on there. Ken One Jennings. Shirt. Ken Jennings. Um, and I want to give it away. It's never been worn. It's brand new. So I got stuff from other shows that I wore. Plus, I just have stuff with tags on there. And I'm like, oh, maybe I could just give this away to... Your blessing to somebody. We're gonna put it on so. Kim's closet. I got everything under control. That's gonna be our, our thing. Now we're gonna start putting up because I got all my clothes from Act Your Age. On Kim's you know? closet? So go to Kim's closet. In my closet. It's in my closet. Do you not it's get all your clothes from Rainbow? I do, but people it costs more do once I wear it. Rainbow. Rainbow I love Rainbow. Like it's one of my favorite stores. Don't yeah. hate. Yeah, I am hating because the clothes smell like like they're gonna blow up if you go past the Shell station. So. <laughs> oh, they got smell like gasoline. I'm not talking about you. it. Just smells like gasoline. Like I shop at Fashion Nova and Akira. I buy stuff online. You know, I it's, it's cute stuff. But I'm saying Rainbow Girl. I didn't get clothes from Rainbow, and I'm like, I didn't set it outside for two weeks. And I'm like, it still smells like the oil fields. Where are they making these clothes? Well, y'all better be careful. Not time. I'm telling them, I'm putting all our clothes on there. We already got some of our clothes on there. Kimscloset.com, K Y M, and then S, closet.com. I said we're going to promote it every week. We promote everybody else's stuff. We need to promote our stuff. Yes. So we can so get Kim's these closet. clothes. Oh, yeah. Kim, we'll bad give news. Them away. What? Bad news. Here, let me break in for some bad news. Your website, website that, is not working. <laughs> Andre. Kim, your website's not working. 
Oh no, Andre. So, you didn't was pay the bill. Bitch, you you don't even own the name no more, Kim. Idris Elba owns Kim. Don't say that. Don't say that. I, 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 it's I a porno it. site now. That's what it is. It's a porno. You know my Kim's other part. one. Oh, it's undergoing scheduled maintenance. Sorry for the inconvenience. So try back later. No, you can't. Okay, that's huh? not supposed to happen. No, that's not supposed to happen. That's probably a conversation you should have with Andre. Because I'm sure it's it it reasonable. Every now and then, it shouldn't happen while you're on the podcast, but you're right. Let's worry about that. <laughs> you know what? We got a very I special think- guest. Well, hold on. I think Andre's has turned your site into OnlyFans. I'm just saying. Kim's no, you know what did happen <laughs> on my other site? My, um, um, oh yeah, Chris. My, uh, my website, kimwhitley.com, I never did get it back. It turned into some Asian site. I said, I'll be damned. So <laughs> I didn't do that. Now I'm Kim, I... kimwhitley.tv. That's my site. See, I told, this is what I told you. I have sherryshepherd.tv, sherryshepherd.org, sherryshepherd.show, sherryshepherd.com. I just bought sherryshepherd.biz. Just bought them all for 10 years. All the years. That's what I probably should have. Yeah, you- we got to do the other thing, too. My um, my quick stick. We got to put all my businesses out there. I've been promoting everybody else, but I forget about my inventions. Yeah, you do because you got some you, you you got some major inventions that are like amazing. You got metal yeah, straw. Right. You got quick stick, which like if you have a problem buckling up your baby seat belt because of the new locks that they put on, Kim has a stick that you can pull the seat belt through the infant carrier seat to lock it. Like that's pretty cool. She's even got a commercial, which I don't understand why we don't not running once a week while we do our podcast. And she's got these metal straws so that they're environmentally friendly and you can reuse them instead of like having a landfill full of straws that can't be digested by the earth. So you have some, and then she's got a book called Delusion of Cinderella, which is kind of an erotic non yeah, because I'm proud of you and you don't promote yourself enough, so I'm going to do it. Uh, it's The Delusions of Cinderella. And this is a very erotic novel about a woman coming into her own. And it's very erotic and it's very hot. So it is a just hot. hot. They really should do a movie like Fifty Shades of Grey on your book, Delusion of I, I, uh, Cinderella. I, 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 I tell Will Packer that they don't, people don't believe when you do your own book. They don't well, believe. Packer's the only one out here in this game. What about Kevin Hart? He need to do something erotic because he's short. Yeah. <laughs> All right. It's time to bring the guest in. Look at you. Don't you think comedians have been talked about enough this week? Kevin's short. He can take it. He, he, he look, grow some more before we stop. Come on now. We we ain't going. Look. We ain't like other comics who be digging their comics. Hey hey hey. Right. <laughs> Right. I love, I, I don't ahead. get to see Kevin like I used to, though. Go, there's people, people make that money. Really, it's not the only one in town. Delusions of Cinderella is a really good erotic novel, and it could be a series. It truly, truly could. You just have to pitch it. See Mickey, uh, who is a frequent guest of ours and one of Ken's really wonderful friends, helped her write it. And it's really good. It is. So you should, Look. you should be true. Pitch it. Yes. Well, She's speaking got a of book, speaking of oh, yes. books. Yes. <laughs> so excited. We have another friend who is a writer. And, and you may remember our girlfriend. Oh. Our girlfriend, Stacy McLean, who has yep. been a guest on our show. Um, and we love Stacy. We have known Stacy, gosh, collectively for what, 25 years? 125 years. I mean, a long time. Stacy McLean started out with us doing stand-up comedy. That's how I read, uh, met her. But her superpower, she is an amazing director. She is yes. a wonderful, wonderful writer of novels. And she's been working on a book for a while, a number of years. And I'm so excited because now she's on a book tour promoting her book. Take it away, Kim. Well, Take it away, Chris. The cost of freedom. <laughs> That's right. Martha Glenn is who Stacy's been working with. Let me just, let me give you a little blurb. You ready for this, Kim? 
Yes, hit it. Hit it. Born and raised on the south side of Chicago, Sherry, you know something about that. Marla Glenn's journey is a testament to resilience and determination. From open mic nights to encounters with music legends, Marla's life is a narrative of triumph over adversity. That's right. <laughs> Notifying you. The cost of freedom. It's not just a memoir. It's a celebration of personal freedom, artistic passion, and the indomitable human spirit. Without any further ado, how about Stacey McLean and Marla Glenn? Yes. Hi. Hi, guys. Oh, my God. Uh, like a little reunion here. <laughs> Welcome to the show. We miss, miss you, too. too. That is Stacy McLean talking. Uh, Marla Glenn is uh, on the other side of her. Um, extraordinary uh, artist uh, that she is. And Stacy's, of course, a fantastic, extraordinary writer. Uh, the Cost of Freedom, there we are, is what we're talking about. Look at that book cover. That is, woo. So yeah. I am so, I'm so excited because I know you've been working on this. Stacy and Marla, Glenn, it's so wonderful to meet you, a fellow Shy town it's, it's nice to meet you, too. Shy town fam. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and I'm looking at this cover. I want to know, what is this book about? Well, uh, The Cost of Freedom, and first of all, me and Marla are first cousins, grew up together on the south side of Chicago. <clears throat> so, I mean, I'm just not a random person who knows Marla. Um, it's about a young stud who won an open mic night in New Orleans and got thrust into the music industry, won gold and platinum albums, was at the top of the charts, ended up on the streets of France asking fans if they could stay with them, got ripped off and ultimately found his, back way, found his way back to um, making good music uh, by having good connections with people that he trusted. And let me just let me just correct you because Kim says she, Marla's pronouns are he. I know, I, so I know what the hell I said accidentally. <laughs> Don't be trying okay. to get me canceled. <laughs> I'm not messing. I'm just saying. This will all be edited I'm out. I'm saying this is how I'm saying she. I was talking about you. I switched oh. in between. Huh? That's my cover. <laughs> okay. Marla, okay. we apologize. Okay. We because here's the here's the thing about our podcast. Uh, we got sent an entire uh, you know one sheet about you. Uh, pronouns yes. being at the top. Uh, safe mm -hmm. to say, Kim didn't read it. Uh, <laughs> it's okay. I, Marla, it. I knew. First of all, Marla, he was just at my house the other day breaking bread. We was drinking beer and talking <laughs> smack. Yeah, and my yeah, body was yeah. ready. So let's let yeah, I know okay. what the hell. Okay, I messed up. I messed up. All right. <laughs> I take it. You know. <laughs> That's all we, we needed. You ain't got to edit nothing now. Please okay. do not edit out. Don't apologize. I don't want it. I love it. How it is. Marla, okay. love you. It's, so, it's so wonderful having you on, Marla. And um, um, okay, and, and I and I just go back. And I'm not the queen of corrections, but Sherry, I, this is my first book. I'm a first time author, and um, uh, what I'm known for is television. And currently, I'm in development at Disney. So um, when I tell you this was a, a, a very difficult journey for me because I knew nothing about publishing that it, it was it's been a challenge. Um, but I'm very excited that we got to this point on the other side of having a book launched on Amazon and looking forward to selling more books. Um, we just left Germany. Um, I was there for three months where we set up a book tour, uh, five different cities and two concerts that Marla had in Cassell and Bonn. We went to Munich, Hamburg. We was in a snowstorm. Baden, Baden. Baden, Baden, uh, Leverkusen, uh, Essen. Uh, uh, where else did we go? Yeah, and it just started uh, only like... Uh, 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 Stacy said, "Can you call somebody and we can go to a, a little place and 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 sell the books?" And I made one phone call and people just called each other. And I was getting phone call after, "Can you do that here? Can you do that over there?" So we ended up with this book tour. 
<laughs> that we didn't plan. You know, we were just seeing how it works and can we get it off the ground, you know? Yeah. So we got it off the ground and they the shows just kept coming and kept coming and kept coming until we ended up over here you know in uh california now chicago and they everybody wants the show uh book tour to, to happen in at their, their city. places or at their city so it it all came naturally this this tour you know so marla i'm so i'm really excited uh because i have not read cost of freedom tell hmm. me what is cost of freedom what is this about your life that I it, need to know about. Well, in the cost of freedom, it's 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 a it's an old song from the past that I'm that I've uh, written, and it's the right words for because it, you know I'm still trying to be free from you know certain things in the in the business that that they did that I didn't know about. But I'm more freer today because now I can um, do my own music without people putting their names in my and saying that they wrote my songs or, you know, and mixing up my my um, fans because my fans didn't know who wrote these songs. Or but giving I, away your royalties. Or giving away my royalties. They just completely robbed me, period, you know. So what I'm being free of, what I'm free from right now is, is all these people in my, in my, uh, uh, credits and they stole so many things. I, they even stole the publishing rights and they just, it's a mess <laughs> what they did, you know, but what I did, I you made say, my comeback through you say, who I am. I just want to I want to correct you. I mean, I want to ask really quickly. They is the music industry or is they managers, agents? Well, they, it's, well, I guess they were managers, but I've never signed with them. I don't know who these people were. I only know one of them and that was Mr. Gonzalez. And he wasn't, I haven't signed with him either. He's, he's the one that did all the, the most stealing. And then, because he was with me first, this is Nina Simone's manager. Yeah, Nina Simone was very instrumental in um, actually, well, connecting putting us together, connecting Marla mm -hmm. with one of uh, the people who um, Marla feels have taken has taken advantage Feel, of. Feel they told me in my in my yeah, face. Yeah, the did. guy did say that. Like one of the interviews I had with him, because I interviewed pretty much everybody in the book, mm -hmm. except for one or two people who refused to give me an interview. Um, and the, the process work where we started on this book 13 years ago, when I tell you, um, I had been going to Germany every year for the past. Yeah, we went to France, Germany, we came back to uh, America, and we did interviews around. So Mr. Gonzalez was one of the people that that is named in the book, we didn't change any names. Uh, and there's so, several other people. There was, there was even a, a musician. Well, go ahead. A I musician. just want to back up for a minute. I want to back, hey, up, back for up for a minute. Because um, we're getting a lot of the book, and I want to make sure that our, our listeners and viewers are knowing exactly what is going on and who they are and who Mr. Gonzalez is. When you mm -hmm. decided to write this book about your cousin, Marla, why? And, and kind of take us through that. Journey. You know, when Marla and I, like, like I said, we grew up as kids. And my first trip, when I was working on the Parkers, I said, oh, I'm going to go visit my cousin in, in France. Uh, Marla was living, I think, in Germany at the time. And we, so we met in France. I took my mom and my auntie Tika, uh, my, mom, my auntie Tika, and my auntie Didi, and we went to France. And Marla picked us up in a limo and we hung out. And Marla started telling me his story, literally. We were sitting in a hotel room through tears. Marla was like, they're ripping me off. I don't know how to handle this. I need somebody to come help me, give me an attorney. Crying to the point where Marla could barely breathe or talk. And so it just stayed on my heart 
to listen to the story. I would come back to the stage, look for attorneys. How nothing. about what you told, asked Mr. Gonzalez at the uh, Buddha bar? Yeah, so <laughs> we, I literally, we, we sat down and had dinner with Mr. Gonzalez. And so, I mean, I found out a lot of things in the beginning. And so lit, about maybe three or four years after that was the end of the Parkers and I was kind of taking a break. I went back to, I met Marla in Germany and uh, we spent two weeks at, at this Sorry. hotel. And I said, yeah. um, listen, I've really been thinking a lot about your story. I would love to write your book. And Marla was like, well, yeah, let's get started. What you waiting on? We should have started this a long time ago. So, you know, it started 13 years ago in a hotel room and, but I had already known the ups and downs of Marla's life. And I just thought it was interesting and compelling. And it was a story that I think young musicians need to know and understand. Marla. Yeah, and I, we, um, Stacy also did a video uh, clip and I like doing my videos with the real story, what happened to me, you know? So we did um, Ruby, Tuesday. Ruby Tuesday. I direct Marla's, but my, so I also <laughs> direct Marla's, I've directed a couple of Marla's music videos. Um, that, this particular one that you've seen is Ruby Tuesday that um, it's kind of some of the music symbolizes some things that Marla had gone through. Um, the the paperwork of Marla walking through the park is Marla walking on top of content. Yeah, and uh, 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 and and newspaper articles from America. From the past, yeah. From America, because I did come out and I, um, I did come home and I want, because I wanted to play some music with my neighbors that I grew up with that was, uh, we all grew up together playing music. And I wanted my neighbors to be a part of what I was doing. And we ended up in the studio doing James Brown, This Is a Man's World. So that was mm -hmm. recorded here in, in, in uh, well, I mean, in LA. Yeah, Marla's done a, a very few covers, but all of yeah, Marla's music- I do covers too. <laughs> all of Marla, 99% of Marla's music is original songs written um, by Marla and- Yeah, with the guitar. Uh, Marla also plays the harmonica. Marla plays about seven diff different instruments, the guitar, the the drums, the harmonica, the clarinet, and three, the congos. Just playing around, nothing so. <laughs> But on stage, and uh, <laughs> I, I have never you... been. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Keep shit. going. I have never been. To... I think what really wowed me is how the fans in Europe respond to Marla's uh, performances. When I tell you, I've never been to a a concert of Marla's that wasn't sold out, where Marla didn't get a standing ovation and didn't get asked for uh, an encore, and it's just. It may in a, in a I don't know no 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 disrespect Chris but there was maybe one or two black faces in the house <laughs> and I was you know, I was very interesting when you talk about that of uh, so many artists especially Marla I want to know what genre of music you play right. and write jazz I'm I'm feeling like jazz all of or... it all of it. I mean have you ever heard any of my music no. I will be googling. I'm going to fall yeah, down the rabbit hole. Go on YouTube. I got I got her CD and I couldn't believe yeah. there was a country. I thought I thought I had hit the radio or something because I heard a country song. I was like, oh, I didn't hit the radio. It's, it's country, it's blues, it's jazz. African, African I, music. Yeah. Reggae. <laughs> gospel, gospel music. Marla sings all genres. Uh, rock, okay. there's rock. I have a uh, yeah rock and yeah, it's dressed up. Yeah, so. uh, if you, I would love to ask this question because you know people always want to know. For what well, when you read the book, but your relationship with Nina Simone, like mm -hmm. how did that even happen? Were you a background singer? How did you even meet Nina Simone? How'd that happen? No, it had nothing to do with music. I, I was uh, uh, working for California Plant Protection. It's a, um, a security, security company. <laughs> yeah. Oh man! Mm -hmm. and, and she just walked in the building to pay her bill. 
What, what happened? No, I, no I, um, I was getting out. I did a double shift. You know, I, always, I used to do a lot of double shifts I, and get out. I would work from the night to the morning, you know, mm -hmm. and come home. And I was living on La Brea in, in, uh, in Los Angeles. In, in one of those um, a furnished uh, kitchenettes hotel. hotel, you know, and you pay every month. It's almost like your own apartment, actually. And uh, there was a sniper on the roof across the street from where where I was living. And it was on the news and all these news, Channel 7 News was there and everything. And uh, this tall black guy comes to me and says, uh, because I, oh, I forgot to put this. I had my guitar with me. Yeah, I always took it to work and played it in in the booth, in the security booth when I didn't have nothing to do. I would just mess with some uh, notes, strings. strings. <laughs> anyway, so the guy comes up to me, this tall guy, and he says, uh, do you play that guitar? And I said, uh, well, I, I try to write songs on it and stuff. He said, do you know Nina Simone? I said, well, he said, do you know any of her songs? And I said, well, to be young, gifted and black, that's all I said. And she said, and he looked at me, he said, here she comes, but don't tell her that it, that you know it's her. And so she comes straight to me and she says, I got to pee. <laughs> and I was like, yes, ma'am. And she got, I need a toilet and I need it now. Wow. I said, yes, ma'am, I live right here, right in back, back of you. So I, uh, me and the guy, uh, and I found out he was her lawyer. This was the guy that won her money back, by the way. And uh, mm -hmm. we went into my little place and she saw that I kept my uniforms clean, my, my uh, security uniforms. I had about six or seven of them. And I always kept them, my shoes polished, you know, correctly in my uniform. And she looked at the uniforms and said, are you a cop? <laughs> I said, no, ma'am, I'm a security officer, you know? And she said, oh, well, can you work, can you work for me? You move out of here today because I was going to pay the rent. And I said, I said, and I told her, I said, ma'am, I'm going to pay my rent. I, I just got paid and I'm going, she said, you give me that money and you move out now. <laughs> and I did. And, and she showed me where she lived and she gave me my own bedroom and stuff like this. And this was in the early eighties. Yeah. And uh, Marla actually to preface that story wasn't interested much in being a singer songwriter. Marla did a lot of open mic nights just goofing off because he could get free beer. But Marla wanted to be a police <laughs> officer growing up. And as God would have it, a turn of events, Marla also ended up living with Bo Diddley. Mm -hmm. And um, what it, it's so weird. The story, as the story goes, it seems like Marla's steps were ordered. Yeah, seems I knew like Bo, was... Bo Diddley before I knew her. Mm -hmm. And when she found out, I knew Bo Diddley, she, and cause I call him Bo Pop. When she found out, she was like, Bo Pop, who is that? I said, Bo Pop, Bo Diddley. And she was like, you know Bo Diddley? And I said, yes, ma'am. She said, call him now. <laughs> so I called <laughs> him, and I gave her the phone. She said, you come get this motherfucker now. <laughs> You know that? <laughs> Miss Simone. I was and, like, what the and, hell is she? <laughs> so he paid my way every, he, they shared me. I was there six months and I was over her house for six months. They just wow. shared. Wow. would go forth. back and forth and working for both of them. And working, yeah, to cut for Miss Simone. I, I made breakfast and stuff like this. I had to clean up. I had to uh, get things fixed like her car. Wow. Where's my car? <laughs> Fix my car. I want my car now. <laughs> you know, she was, she was so funny you went, to me. You went from hanging out 
I mean, Nina Simone's bodyguard, assistant. Yeah, we're there. Yeah. Right but then, like, how did you get over to Europe and playing? Yep. You wanted to be and a cop. Music. Oh, you tell that part. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Marla, literally, <laughs> after leaving with Nina Simone, yeah, it's very interesting. This was no, all, this that was, was a, with uh, Walter when we when, yeah yeah Walter I know, but I was saying a, yeah Walter. Yeah. There's a guy by the name of Walter Gentry. As a matter of fact, we just lo left Los, Los Angeles hanging out with Walter. <laughs> And um, Walter was a friend of Marla's and they both did open mics. And Walter decided, turn your phone off. Oh shit. Uh, make it on silent. <laughs> uh, Marla basically um, really got caught up in the crack epidemic and was on crack for a little bit. And this guy who we found out later had a yeah, crush on Marla, didn't know Marla was going. gay, um, said, hey, listen, I'm going to New Orleans. He knew, I, he knew we would share the apartment with the- I'll every, tell you what he told me in the oh, interview. That, he lying his ass. <laughs> that motherfucker <laughs> lying. <laughs> we shared the apartment. Marla, what's this? And he had the apartment for one weekend and I had the apartment for the next weekend, just in case we bring, bring some money. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna say this. I don't feel so bad yeah. about Kim using the wrong pronoun. <laughs> Your roommate told Stacey he didn't even know. <laughs> he didn't know. That's what he hey. told me. Now, this is the thing. So Walter Gentry um, asked Marla if you know you wanted to go to New Orleans because it was it was some open mics in Hollywood, but he said it's a lot, we can live off the land if we went to New Orleans. So oh. him and Mar he bought a truck. And him and Marla drove to New Orleans and within, I don't know, six to eight months or so, there's a Frenchman who came to oh, do- We lost each other. We, we Marla got and lost and, they, um, there's, uh, there's, and I found some roommates, you know. Marla was- I was, we were, uh, what do you call that? Crashing in an empty house. You call that what? Um, I forgot oh, the term. Squatting yeah, when you live. Squatting. Right, squatting. Yeah. <laughs> I was squatting. a squatter in New Orleans. Marla was squatting. So this guy played oh, yeah. the drums and this girl played the guitar. She was very good. They were good. And we ended up squatting together in this house <laughs> in New Orleans. And he came home and said to me, oh, you Not know you in a contest. A and I was another like, guy said, hey, you're in a contest. Did you know about it? Yeah. And I, at that time, I had lost um, Walter. 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 I didn't know where the fuck he was at. <laughs> but uh, the, this guy tells me I'm in a contest. So I said, okay, but well, let me go down the street and see. So I saw these papers on the windows of shops and my name was on it. So I was like, okay, well, I'll go. Uh, nobody, I didn't even know I was in this contest, but I went there and I got there early and I did three songs, The Cost of Freedom, because I had just wrote that one. And believer and, believer and uh and uh and and uh old man Take look a look at my, my life. life i'm a lot but i said old oh, woman <laughs> and uh so uh <laughs> you see what i'm saying <laughs> so uh when i won the french guy a jean claude happy sue yeah jean claude happy sue is a guy who actually came from this little town called to North France. Story short. It is, a, to make a long story short, this Frenchman <laughs> came to New Orleans looking for talent with the New Orleans style flair. He found Marla and a few other artists took in the, the <laughs> took Marla, but before Marla- In the took, Indian tribe. <laughs> before he took Marla back to New Orleans, <laughs> Marla had gotten arrested. Um, I was on house arrest uh, because there was a, a guy who was who was acting as Marla's manager who took Marla's money and said, you know, so Marla got into Only trouble. Only a hundred bucks, a okay. hundred something. And so when Marla when Marla did the contest, um, Jean Claude Havisu waited for Marla for three months while she finished up her his her house arrest time. It was fun. And the next thing you know, Marla was thrust into literally performing from going from performing for ten or fifteen people at a nightclub to it eight thousand people at yeah, a festival. Eight, eight thousand, and I came on. They put me on the white horse, and I came down the straight in the middle, and it was eight thousand people but it, i didn't i wasn't nervous about that 
That, I was terrified. <laughs> that was the that was the incident that, that catapulted Marla. And within a year of being in France, Marla ended up uh, getting gold and platinum albums, uh, gold and platinum awards on his first album called This Is Marla Glenn. And Mrs. Simone is the one who introduced Marla to um, Mr. Gonzalez. Who yeah, but she knew he was going to do, she was like, she cussed his ass out. She was like, if you if if you do uh, this child at that time I was a child, <laughs> she said, if you do this child like you did me, I will kill you myself. <laughs> and I was like, she was like, you, you he's gonna take you. She told me he's gonna take you where you need to be, but I'm sure he's gonna do. Rip but you off. I didn't even Rip you any contract with him. He was just a road management. I didn't want to sign i asked him i said well why are you working for me and and uh you're just a road manager i don't have no management contract with you and where is my goddamn money this is you this know? story among others are are in the book um that talk about the highs and the lows of marla's musical career musical journey <laughs> and um the the, the challenges that we face was I had to go through several, like hundreds of magazine articles to piece together the timeline in order to make sure that I had everything in order. And um, sitting down with Marla in the beginning, it, it was it was crazy because Marla was still deeply affected by the events that happened. And Marla still am. <laughs> was crying to the point where still I'm do. like, I can't get couldn't get the words out so i would come i would go to germany every three months i mean like uh three months out of the year in order to get the story and finally when the pandemic hit i was finishing up the last like four or five chapters and and then we got the book launch uh october 17th it's been on amazon since october 17th so I'm, very excited. And you you guys have heard me talk about, oh, I got to get home and write my book, Sherry. Right. You know, you have no idea how much you helped me when you hired me to do Scruncho's uh, solo show because I needed money so bad to just sit down and write. I needed to be able to focus because I was so deep into it. I couldn't turn around and go, oh, I'm not going to finish it. You can't put 10 years into a project and go, oh, I, yeah, I ain't going to finish it. I'm just, I'm big on completion. Well, every time we thought we was finished, some more shit came. <laughs> yeah, oh. way I was. and you know, and we, oh. and even now, there's still more stories, but there's not as strong, and I don't feel so violated. Yeah, I'm so violated uh -huh. anymore. Uh, so, so I guess my question is to: We're talking a project that's taken 13 years. You finally finished it. You toured in Germany. You've toured a little bit in the United States. Um, now, and now it's not, it's not on audio. It's, and it's only in English. And you I know you found a challenge in Germany that the Germans would like the book translated into German. Mm -hmm. um, yes. I literally just finished. And the French. They, they I literally the just French. finished. Um, I hired a, a woman who lives in San Francisco, who is a German woman who's, speaks, of course, fluent English and German. And she literally just finished a German translation of the book. And I'm toying with the idea. I, I don't know if I'm going to self-publish or look for a, a publisher because, of course, I, I think publishing in the United States is one thing. But to be able to publish a book in German and know that market is going to be even more of a challenge that I don't know that I can take on. So no, you I'm, don't even know if you said the words right, Stacy. You could have said, I know. And, the left, and the lady up yeah. in San Francisco would be like, and then, you know, and I slapped out of her face. And then you, you don't know if the story You're absolutely the same. right. You but I have, to get a, I have to get another person to go behind. It's like I have to get an editor to go over you her know, words. Right. It, it, yeah, I have okay. to. It, and it may be. Yeah, it, it's, you know, but, okay. but the, I, it was interesting because the Germans in, in G Germany bought the book in English and many of them did ask, when is the German translation coming out? I will buy it then. Some of them bought it for people. There was one, one guy 
who said, look, I read a little bit of English. My girlfriend doesn't read any English, but I am going to read this book from front to cover because she is a big fan of Marla Gillan and we want to know the story. And so that oh, really wow. warmed my heart. That really warmed my heart. The Germans have been so accommodating. When I tell you, I went there with literally just two um, events as far as book readings and it snowballed into six. Um, it really you did. Got, you ain't got to say thank you because the, the German people ain't watching this podcast. So, yeah. oh, they will. Are you? Really? <laughs> oh, they always go watch it. Yeah, yeah. because they, okay. they speak fluent. Most of them speak fluent Wherever they, English yeah. anyway. English. My mom tunes. Right. My mom thank tunes in every week. When, when, when? <laughs> this is the question I have. You have the Chris. book. You have you. You're just now trying to translate it into German. Your wish. Your goal is you want to translate it into French as well. Are we trying to get some, are, do you have like a GoFundMe where you're trying to collect money to do this? Or are you going, I want people to purchase this book? I, I would love for people to purchase the book like now because we need the funds in order to move forward. Uh, in regards to getting the other translations done. Um, well, let's, I mean, let's I, tell our people right now, uh, to Way get to because you have a hard cover and a soft cover, right? Yes, on Amazon.com. How many Amazon? Yeah. We have we've had amazing reviews. Uh, a lot of people who have read the book, some of the early readers, some of the um re people who wanted to review the book have. And we've I think the lowest star we've gotten was four stars. And so everybody is enjoying the book. It's an easy read. The chapters are really quick. Uh, they're like maybe five or six pages each. It's really simple, Marla, you know, because I just wrote what Marla said. So Marla speaks, you know, simple English. So I didn't, you ain't gonna find a whole bunch of words. You gotta Google. It really is talking from the heart, the way Marla saw things mm -hmm. unfold and all of the behind the scenes of what happened right. throughout so Marla's Let's push well, we'll come, you, know, so you can go to Amazon.com, Amazon.com, mm -hmm. and the title of the book is The Cost of Freedom. The Cost of Written Freedom. By Stacey McClain. Looking for miracle Written lawyers. And, and, uh, and you can get a hard Marla, Marla Glenn's life. And this is a cautionary tale as well about the it intricacies is. and the pitfalls of the music industry. We've heard this so, uh, so much people being taken advantage of people taking, um, you know, create, uh, you know, saying that, uh, you know, stealing in essence, your, yeah. your stuff, your things and putting their name on it. Also, mm -hmm. you know, I'm sure you talk about in your book, the journey of being a stud, you know, and, mm -hmm. and being a performer in, in Europe and over Johnny. here. Yeah. I know two mamas will commit to purchasing what is it 10 or 20 copies of your book we got to get oh, you to okay. sign them so you yeah. can right. so you can so, you know yeah. so we can send them out a signed copy with you and Stacey so we have to figure out how to do that uh get that to you and awesome. um so nice. we will commit to that to send yeah. to you you know and we have awesome fans that support our people that come on here yes. This is also a black business, Chris, by Cita Lewis mm -hmm. and um, Miracle Buttercream. Oh, well, that's what it's that, all about. Go ahead, go Kim. Ahead. Sorry, I thought you. No, hit it. Um, yeah, Miracle, Miracle Buttercream. Well, I know, I know. Sherry has a, a show to hit, so we'll tell people about Miracle Buttercream. That's right, Cita Lewis. You've seen her here on the show. She supports a black mm -hmm. business each and every week as an official sponsor of the show very important that you support miracle buttercream because she makes things like this possible you've seen everybody from what kim whitley sherry shepherd to denzel washington talking about miracle yeah. buttercream it's a big deal so thank you to Cita and miracle buttercream thank you right. Cita. i just want marla what? this has been i have to uh it, we're, it's a storm here in new york and i got to get out in it because i have two um, shows that I have to do stand up comedy. So I have to take my leave. But it has been what an honor to have met you. And I can't wait to see you perform. So if you perform here in the right. United States, I want to see 
you and Thank I guess I'm gonna fall down that I'm gonna find what you what you saying because I want to know <laughs> who you're working yeah. on. I'm, I'm getting oh, the book. Can I, can I say Not one you, thing? Oh, go ahead, Mom. Yes. My, my main strategy is to get a, a, a lawyer firm to attack this stuff. You know, I I have mm-hmm. no time. Like, I would wish that I had that lawyer that Miss Simone had, but I think he passed away, <laughs> you know? And he, mm-hmm. he'd swung a miracle on her and she was able to live her life. And, you know, mm-hmm. it'd be good to have justice. If you look you know? at some of Mrs. Simone's old uh, videos, literally on YouTube, she's mm-hmm. saying things like, where is my money? You know, I should have a house. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Some of the same roads. I don't even have a home. Some of the same roads that Nina traveled, Marla traveled as well. In the so, same shows. So when you mm-hmm. hear people speak up, you know, I'm doing this for the next generation. Uh, it's one of those things where Miss Simone was like the blueprint because Marla came up behind Miss Simone, traveled some of the same roads, deal with the same managers and producers. And so. Um, Marla wasn't as lucky as Miss Simone to find someone to take on, you know, trying to find out what happened with the with the monies behind Marla. Marla's one of Marla's old managers said, you know, we made millions of dollars off of Marla Glenn, and that's literally was in a Switzerland newspaper uh, last year sometime. And so it's it you know it's. The musicians' roads, a musician's life is never easy. You know, I think that they have it even more. We have unions, you guys, you know, writers, directors, producers. Right. Musicians don't have the same type of unions yes, that we they do. do. Well, not the same Here type in, of unions. In, uh, no, in, uh, in California, which says. Uh, not sweet. ASCAP, you talking about ASCAP? ASCAP, yeah. they have a union. But the, that's when, when I was in ASCAP. Sent me books and everything to uh, look up any music. They they oh, have my a, bad. They have a use. So like Suiza would be able because I cause they I'm should saying, have one. So in other the words, way. if there is an attorney and listening, they or watch it. Oh, okay, that's willing to and literally jump in. Have to, it'd have contact. to be an attorney that is very familiar and versed in overseas, mm-hmm. over yeah. in Europe. You know, to well, be able to handle no. no Miss Simone okay. didn't go that route. Miss Simone's attorney was, was uh, a United America. was an American mm-hmm. attorney. Because oh, okay. see, the point is, is that I'm a United States citizen, and mm-hmm. over there, I'm, I'm a Auslander, and I'll never get my justice. And uh, you know, just take it. It's like no, the, you, you keep doing it for God's sakes. You, you, and some you of that is cease. in the book. Marla literally probably have gone to more than twenty to thirty attorneys, knocking on doors, giving and, money. And they hit on the other side because they called up and they found out I really had money. And then they ended up taking me to court for money on work they didn't even do. So, you know, wow. I'm like, what the hell kind of shit? Okay, forget it. I'll just ask God. And <laughs> keep on going. Well, but I, but the story I is a way of yeah. lying alone. Well, let's get, get this to people. Be, yeah, she got to go. Please go to yeah. Amazon and get Dot Marla com. Glenn's uh, book, uh, Mar- Amazon.com, to get Marla uh, Glenn, The Cost of Freedom, written by, well, co written with Stacey McLean. This is how we can support. Get these books so many people talking about it and therefore then you can translate it and hopefully get an attorney out of this. We wish you the best of luck. Thank you so much uh, you for much. joining Thank us. You Thank you, Marla. What a it's pleasure. What an honor. Yeah. Stacey, and your you. show was great anyway, by the way, Kim. <laughs> your show. Oh, the stand-up. Uh, the stand-up. Yeah, I enjoyed it. <laughs> Thank really. you. I was, I, uh, you're taking it in the face, Sherry. <laughs> And, and right, before ladies. we go, uh, Kim and I will be in Dallas, Texas, January 12th. That's why I got to go do a show. I got to get on stage yep. January 12th. This weekend. In Dallas, Texas, at Majestic Theater this weekend. And then February 3rd okay. in Redondo Beach. Um, yes. So go to oh, Sherry's I want to come back. Okay. Yep. Yeah, Redondo Sherry Beach. Show TV. Dot com where Sherry you get your tickets for the Majestic or Redondo Beach.
Charlie Mamas. Two funny mamas. What's with the grip? Sheffield and Kim. Yeah, that's them. About to throw down again. Take a